employees, the lifeblood of any successful business. Human Capital Strategies offers resources to help employers meet their obligations, from compliance issues and insurance rates to compensation for injury or illness. Human Capital Strategies provides businesses like yours with integrated solutions to effectively manage your critical human resource needs. Contact them today at 480-962-1580 or visit the website hcscando.com. Human Capital Strategies, the next best thing to no employees. Company culture takes a lot of work. And the first thing I want to do is sort of get a feel for what, what do you think about when you hear the word company culture? What, what does that actually mean in an in a organization? Norms. Norms. Anything Attitudes. else? Attitudes. Comfortable going to work. Comfortable going to work. I mean, I like to go to work because of the culture. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Or vice versa. I'm sorry? Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Maybe you don't enjoy going to work for some reason. You can't really figure out why, but. Well, I'm hoping to give you some value today that you can bring back to your organizations in thinking about what really is culture and what can we do as business leaders to affect and change the culture in our companies. To me, company culture is, it's sort of who you are as a company. It's not about what you do, it's really the essence, the character that makes up an organization. And there are several different elements to culture, and we'll talk about each of those today and and how they sort of affect each other. Um, One can't be a standalone, Um, they're all kind of necessary in order to build a culture. Um, So those elements are the, the values, the behaviors, the actions, and the measures that make up a company. Culture is like ice cream flavors. So when you think about ice cream, you know, every flavor is made up of the same basic ingredients, but what makes one stand apart from the other really is the flavor. And there's no right flavor. Every person has a different flavor, you know, favorite flavor ice cream. So I think that's kind of a nice um, analogy that she uses. So you can think about when you go back to your organization, what, what flavor ice cream am I? Am I the, you know, Southwest Airlines bubblegum flavor? Am I Edward Jones, very conservative vanilla? Um, it's just kind of a nice way to think about it. And when we look at companies with strong cultures, we can also find that many of them, um, or the culture survives founders and leaders and markets. They are able to adapt to change without changing their culture. So I want you to sort of think about that as we go through this as well. This is a very opportune time to think about culture in this sort of turbulent times, in this economy. Primarily because when things are sort of smooth sailing, when things are booming, your business is growing, you're not necessarily motivated to think about you know, the behind the scenes, the culture that is making up your organization. And it's hard to get you know, leaders and employees motivated to work on, on this kind of issue in the workplace. But now that things are a little shaky, people might be more motivated to really focus on the culture and sort of get aligned with where you want to take the culture in your company. Why do you care about all this? What's, what's the payoff, if you will, for your business? Now some business leaders that I talk to look at culture as, as kind of the soft stuff or you know, an exercise in, in teamwork. That, that's not really what culture is about. Culture ideally should be defining who you are as an organization and then using that to build your business for the benefit of you as a business owner and for your employees, obviously. I worked for a company in California called the Vision Service Plan, their eye care insurance company. And I wouldn't say that they necessarily had a strong, strong culture, but they were trying to figure it out when I worked for them. And they had defined some core values and they gave each employee a little pocket card, like credit card sized card with the values on them. So the purpose of doing that was that if employees were ever faced with a tough decision and maybe they couldn't talk to their manager, maybe it was you know, on the weekend, whatever, they could look at this card and think, if I make this decision, is it in accordance with these values or not? That was the whole point of it. And it was kind of interesting. I, I thought it was a little corny when I first heard about it, but I actually ended up using it once. I had a supervisor, part of my client group there was a call center, so I had a supervisor on the weekend call me about 
a disastrous situation in the call center. And we had to make some quick decisions on how to handle it. It was a violence in the workplace issue. And, you know, we pretty much knew what we needed to do, but it was a tough decision. It was a long-term employee, you know. You know. So we looked, at, we looked at the values and we said, let's really think about this. If we make this decision to terminate this person today, is it, is it consistent with our values? Is that really what we should be doing as an organization? And then, of course, the most important. So let's say a leadership team has gone through an exercise of sort of, this is where we want to go, these are our values, this is the kind of culture we want to build, and these are some things that we need to tweak. I think that the best step after that is for leaders to go out and practice. To actually go out and try to behave according to those values. If you have a list of five values posted in your lobby, ask yourself, Am I taking actions? Am I behaving according to those values? If I went out and asked my employees whether or not I act according to those values, what would they say? Are you really modeling those, those values? So this is a very important part, I think. Because culture is not built on, on words or, or making plans. It's really built on actions. And you know, culture to me again is, is sort of all the all the norms and, and rules, unwritten or not, um, that that affect how people interact in a company and how they interact with customers. So really think about the behaviors. Um, and I think the last point, um, you got to act. I mean, you you can't plan to oblivion when it comes to culture. It this type of process has to be approached from a different perspective than an operational problem. This is not a problem to solve. This is a process to help you become a more competitive company. And that's driven by actions. And it's driven by behaviors of the top leaders in a company. All right, communication. I think this is the second most important component of culture change. The one being, obviously, the leadership being committed to the culture change. The second most important, I think, when you get to this point, is communicating it. You need to let employees know what is expected of them. Maybe you even tie it to their performance evaluations like they do at Zappos. Maybe you start measuring not only what your sales rep accomplishes, do they meet the quotas, do they meet the goals, maybe you start measuring how they did that. They walk over dead bodies to get there, you know, is, is that okay? Or do you measure things that are valuable to your organization as well as what people accomplish? Once you start thinking about this kind of stuff, it, it's interesting what you'll notice. Especially if you work in, you know, if you have clients and you go into different companies, um, you know, you get a different feel in every place you go. Whether, like I said, they've ever thought about it being defined as their culture or not, each company has one. You know, you are something. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, or, or people know how to put it in words, but you know, you sort of get a feeling when you walk into a business, right? And how people are interacting with each other. And how they're treating you as a customer or a vendor. It's not only the employees, it's, it's really how you're presenting yourself to your clients, your vendors, anybody who gets in contact with you. And, and that consistency and how you do that is really what builds culture. When you think about the values in your company, or the values that you'd like to develop for your company, Think not only about those words, because they're pretty much meaningless unless people are actually acting and behaving according to them. And in my book, the people responsible for developing a company culture and setting those values are the top leaders of the company. Now in a very, very, very small business, and I've seen this successfully done by HR people in small businesses. You can make it more of a grassroots effort. You know, you involve everyone in building a culture. That might work in a very, very small organization. But ideally, the leaders of the company, the top leaders of the company, should be the people who define the culture. Because if you involve employees or you have, you know, a little HR project, to, to build a culture and the leaders are not on board with that, it's never going to work. You're not going to be able to sustain a culture unless the leaders of the company are committed, driving it, exemplifying those, those values and culture that you want to establish.